What's up guys, it's your boy Damone and welcome back to another Black Desert Mobile video. Today we're going to talk about getting started off right with 8 mistakes that you want to avoid when playing this game. <laughs> <laughs> in the next video guys I'm going to talk about a cash out buying guide for my pay to win people out there that are looking to spend money or even my free to play people people or even my free to play people who are thinking about potentially spending cash but you absolutely don't know what to buy so make sure you guys be on the lookout for that guide as well but like I said in today's video I wanted to talk to you guys about eight mistakes after making a crap ton of mistakes wasting a ton of cash and just doing stuff all kinds of wrong I want to talk about those key things that could really really jump start your progression so the first mistake that I made and I'm sure a lot of people might be struggling with is forcing yourself to play one character let me explain to you what I mean by that now in most games you play these you know types of games MMOs or gash RPGs or you know adventure RPGs let's say and you think that all right boom or most games kind of force you to try to think like all right if I have one character I need to focus on this one character so I can progress as fast as I possibly can and get all the best loot in the game, which in a sense kind of is true. But the thing here, guys, is if you've picked a character that you're playing right now that you thought was going to be cool but didn't end up being as cool, but you're forcing yourself to play the character because that's what you think that you need to do, that is absolutely not the case in this game. So what you guys are looking at right now is a character, uh, Freya, who was the Valkyrie that I created, who was the first character I created, actually, who was level one um, at the start of this video. And then after a few takes, now she's level eight. <laughs> but I, I made her and I decided that I didn't want to play her. And I must have ran around staring at her for a, a bunch of time because I was like, well, if I'm going to play, you know, I just want to play one character the whole way through because otherwise it's going to hurt my uh, progression. But then what I found out was that your family actually shares a CP pool. So let me explain to you what I mean by that. It doesn't share your total CP, right? Because on one of my characters, my CP is like uh, pulling close to 3,000. Um, but that's not saying that if you have a 3,000 or 4,000 or 5,000 CP character, that every new character you create will have that. But what it does mean is this. So if you see this, I have a base family CP of about 1,025. It takes into consideration my Black Spirit, uh, which you guys should be uh, leveling up. Your Black Spirit is very, 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 very important to your progression. It takes into to consideration your passive skill. So if you guys scroll down to all of your skills and make sure you guys are using your skill books as well. But if you scroll down to your skills, you'll notice that every character has passive skills. And in the beginning, I thought these passives only applied to my individual character that I was using, but these are family wide. So the more books you get of these, the more overall stats your character is going to have. And this right here, I think uh, when I look at this kind of reminds me of like true in game progression, because even when your CP is maxed or whatever, you can continue to get skill books and skill books and skill books and continue to level up these passives to make your family overall. And this is why you had to pick a family name, but it makes your family overall stronger. So when looking at this, the higher your passive skills are, the stronger any character that you create from scratch in your family is going to be. Now granted, the first character that you create is obviously going to be a lower base character CP. As you guys can see over here on the right, the base character CP by herself is only 103. But if you guys have started leveling a character, let's say you guys made a giant, not saying giant's bad or anything like that, but let's say you made a giant uh, like myself and you were like, you know what, I'm just not feeling this. Maybe the farming rate is too slow. Maybe I want to try a witch, maybe I want to try something else. You don't have to be afraid because they don't punish you um, as hard for playing multiple characters because, again, it's a collection of heroes. One thing that you guys can you can also find comfort in is the pet system. Now, with the pet system, not, not in terms of enchanting the pets. You might not be able to find comfort in, <laughs> in enchanting the pets or combining the pets. But when you're looking at your pets, however you level up your pets or if you go ham... Uh, your pet bonuses are shared between all of your characters. So if you have three pets that you've leveled up to tier three, tier four, tier whatever, tier 5,000 million, 276, um, whatever character you create or play on will be able to use these pets at any given time. As you progress through the game, you will also unlock a camping system. Okay, and with this camp, it's like a customizable town that you can use to boost your economy, so on and so forth. And as you're going through this, this economy of the or this camp, excuse me, this town is shared between all your characters as well. So any upgrades, any management, any staff that you hire, anything you got going on is going to be shared between all of your characters. And with that and the camp, I really wanted to talk to you guys about this. And this is a big thing when it came to forcing myself to play one character. As if you guys look at this, you have a storage system in your camp. 
So if you guys have collected armor, right, because armor is not class specific. Now, weapons and off weapons are class specific, although there are some off weapons or sub weapons that multiple classes can use. So like a witch and a archer can both use a dagger. A Valkyrie and a knight can both use a shield. But in terms of your overall armor, let's say you're playing on a character, you had some green armor or some plus gear that you had that you wanted to use on somebody else, you can chunk this gear into the crate here and then you can just pull it out uh, on another character. So I can just grab this here, boom, unload this. Now it's on my character. And then, ooh, lo and behold, now I have some gear that I can put on my character and just use. So this is something that's really, really useful if you if your other characters that you built have materials that you want to use to enhance or improve your your new main character uh, so to speak uh, you can definitely 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 transfer equipment and that's something that if you guys overlooked you guys might want to take a second look at that so now we're gonna get into the second mistake and I'm actually making it as we speak so what am I doing right now exactly I'm killing monsters but that's not the mistake entirely the mistake entirely is thinking that you have to just kill monsters to level. So the big thing in this game, guys, especially if you want to level quickly, especially early on, uh, you want to focus on your quest chain, period. The quest chain is going to advance the story and it's going to allow you to level the fastest. In about a 12 hour period when I was playing on a vacation day, uh, in 12 hours just clicking the quest button, okay, and upgrading my gear periodically, I was able to go from 1 to 43 literally in a day. It was super duper fast. It's like, boom, gone. Now granted it started to slow down. There were some gear checks in there, some mobs and some bosses that, listen, when they hit me, it made me want to call my mama, you know, because it hurt. Ow. <laughs> shed a tear uh, but that's typically what you guys want to be looking at now the only time I really recommend just leveling or just killing monsters obviously to level or get XP is when you guys are going into black spirit mode and for those of you guys who are unaware what black spirit mode is maybe you guys just started but black spirit mode I think it becomes available like level 13 or something like that uh, but relatively early and what this allows you to do is basically have your character auto hunt auto gather auto fish granted you'll need stamina for auto gathering but you can auto hunt while you're sleeping so let's say if there's a quest that you have to kill like 500 mobs and you're tired you can go to bed you can turn this black spirit mode on for three to six hours uh, depending on if you you know bought the upgrade or not if you didn't get the upgrade it's three hours if you got the upgrade it's six hours and then you can use this to kind of activate and it'll take your character to the highest you know cp place that it should be farming um, and if there's a very specific place that you want to farm you're like mama i want to farm wolves then what you'll do is you'll take your character to the wolf the wolven forest or whatever the hell <laughs> and then you'll activate black spirit mode there and then from there um, you'll be good to go but in overall for total xp if you guys want to level as fast and as efficient as possible you guys want to make sure that you utilize the quest system because this is where all the fast xp is now also just a small little tip here that i wanted to add on top of this to add some more value here is when you guys look at the world map and make sure you guys utilize the world map here but when you look at this world map uh, sometimes you guys will see like little exclamation points and stuff and if you click on a map like let's say for instance you're farming here or you're getting ready to log off to go to sleep to activate black spirit mode if there's an exclamation point here chances are that there's a repeatable quest here that you can do so make sure you guys go there explore what the repeatable quest is pick that up so if you guys are logging off in black spirit mode you guys can knock out the repeatable quest so when you log back on or if while you're playing and you're doing these quests uh, you can get some credit for this and kind of maybe well not necessarily double up on your xp but get some bonus xp that can definitely definitely speed up your progression now before we get into gear and gear management and the mistakes that i made there i wanted to talk about one mistake that i made that it was actually a really 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 big mistake and guys this mistake is going to take us to the camp system so if you guys are noticing here i have you know my characters sort of around and if you guys haven't figured out by now, you can gather stuff in camp, but when you guys are not in your camp, you can also chop down trees. You guys can fish. Uh, we're not going to use fish in this example, but let's say uh, chop down trees and mine and uh, for, uh, forage. Forage. Is forage the word I'm looking for? <laughs> Harvest. <laughs> Harvest the bushes, right? Um, now, the big mistake that I made was I wasted all of my stamina. So if you guys see this resource here, it's stamina. And this doesn't work like typical Gacha games where like, you know, some most Gacha games, it's like you have 234 energy or 80 energy. You can only do so many runs a day. And after the energy is gone, you got to, you know, open up the wallet, crack it up, refill, and then you can have permission to play. 
Um, in this situation, though, stamina is used for a very important resources, and that's managing your camp. Um, managing the camp is, is also another big mistake, which we'll get into here in a second after we talk about this. But managing the camp is one of the most important parts of your progression, um, especially later on. I neglected this probably until I was level 45, and then I realized how big of a mistake that I made. Now, granted, there are quests that are gonna force you to come and upgrade your camp, but you wanna give this some love. And the way that you do that early on is not to waste your stamina. So what I did before is I had quests that came up that was like, oh, level up a house. So I went to the house, I started leveling this up, and then uh, and I'd upgrade it, and then like, boom, hit the stamina, waste the stamina, or I'd be refreshing the shop, wasting my stamina. And what this did was, with that waste of stamina, it set my progression back, because when it was time to upgrade my city, I was unable to, and it made me take a lot more extra time to progress through the story and or get to new regions, because you'll have to do a uh, quest to move into the next regions and stuff. So it cost me a lot dearly up front. So what I recommend doing when you guys start the game and you guys are just running around here in the beginning, do yourself a favor. And if you guys are here and you guys got extra time, find these trees and chop these down. Okay, chop these trees down, mine the rock, because you're going to need the wood and the rock early on. You guys might be like, but well, D, what about the herbs and stuff? Do I'm going to, am I going to need the herbs? You will need the herbs and the plants and stuff later, but it's not, they're not going to matter as much in the beginning because you can buy potions up to medium grade potions. Now, once you start getting into level 40, 50 and beyond, then you'll need high grade potions. And then of course you can craft those. But in the beginning, the most important thing um, is going to be, uh, I think this really help you guys out is to get as much wood and stone as you can up front. So when it's time to start upgrading your village and get into the economy portion of the game, you're ready to go. Now, just a little word of caution here, guys. Um, there's also a way that you guys can fish in this game. And fishing does not require stamina like chopping wood and or mining. However, the kicker is, is when you guys are fishing, if you guys decide to auto fish or do whatever when you guys are not in the game, it, fishing gives you quite a bit of XP. Now, the mistake I've seen a lot of people make when they opted to go fishing is that, let's say you went to sleep, you're like, oh, I'm going to level up super duper fast, and I'm just going to come back and just crush the game. The problem is, is if you over level, let's say you've gone five, six, seven levels higher than what you're supposed to be for the story content because you try to shortcut the game. Um, if, the, if the mobs and stuff become great, then you literally will miss out on a crap ton of loot. So in terms of fishing, I recommend waiting on the fishing or really skipping fishing altogether unless it's just something that you want to do. But if you guys really want to do fishing, I recommend waiting until much, much later um, after you guys have you know leveled or did whatever you need to do before you start the fishing process because it could hurt you um, if you end up being uh, too high of a level, which will most likely happen if you decide to do overnight fishing with Black Spirit mode once it's unlocked. Now, this brings me to my next topic, guys, which is uh, another mistake that I made, which was neglecting my camp. Uh, like I told you guys before, I neglected this camp until I was around level 40 uh, because I didn't realize how important this was. And you guys might have heard me mention when I said, hey, guys, uh, you might want to make sure that, you know, <laughs> you get your stuff together because when you get into high grade potions uh, or high potions, this is where you're going to craft them. Not only that, in terms of progression, when you get into this, if you upgrade your stuff high enough, um, I, I struggled for a long time trying to get better gear because my luck wasn't as good with the coin shop, which we'll also get into in this video. Um, but it wasn't that good so i was stuck with green and blue gear for the longest time and blue gear caps at level 20 um so with the gear capping at level 20 i felt like i was super hard cap because i wasn't getting any purple gear out of the shop i didn't get no yellow drops like everybody's getting um and i was also ignoring the market as well but as you guys go through this and you guys upgrade your town center you'll get access to crafting equipment which you can use to to progress through the game so let's say in the beginning you're going to rush through green you're going to get green pretty fast you'll get blue pretty fast and then like i said blue you can only plus to 20 and then you're just kind of stuck but this is a nice way and a relatively cheap way although it takes a little bit of time but if you guys have been gathering the materials like i mentioned early on this can make it a lot easier for you guys if you guys need to craft equipment so as you guys are continuing to upgrade your city uh, this is something that you don't want to ignore because this is also a place that you're going to get access to a lot of cool stuff later on um, that's really going to help you specifically large hp potions so when you're getting into your camp you want to make sure that you do not neglect this 
pay attention to, you know, what kind of wor uh, workers are here. Make sure you're upgrading your workers. Make sure you're paying attention to your economy. But if you guys are using your stamina, you're upgrading your stuff, you're using the resources to do what it is that you need to do to create a stable economy, this will ultimately help you speed up your progression and make it a lot smoother than it was for me because I was too busy fumbling around thinking I could just muscle my way through the game. So now let's get into the gear portion. Now, the gear portion was where a lot of the mistakes that I made, and this is something that slowed down my progression, where people just passed me up. And the, the reason why uh, this is important is because how I looked at this was when I saw gray gear, it made me think of traditional MMO or a traditional game. If it's gray gear, all I got to do is get to green, get to blue, get the next grade up, and kill stronger monsters, right, so I can get better gear. So I don't need to plus the gear up that I have. Now, what that mistake cost me is a lot of time because in this game, it's quite a bit different. Now, you can get green gear relatively easy um, from, from Shikatu Shop or whatever his name is, but we'll talk about him in a little bit. But what I don't recommend doing is plusing the white gear that you get. So what's going to happen is you'll get into the game. You'll get green gear as soon as you possibly can. Uh, once you get into that, just use the stones that you have to upgrade your gear. You're going to get plenty of stones. You don't have to save your stones. And the reason I say this is because when you look at this gear, let me back this up a little bit. But let's say you're leveling up, and let's pretend that my gear is green here. But with your Black Spirit, eventually you're going to be able to transfer enhancements. So what that means is, let's say I had this sword here, and let's pretend that this is green, and then I pull the blue or a purple. And let's say I wanted to now switch the gear. I can put my purple on, I can use the transfer enhancement to use, so now this is purple pretend. I can use my transfer enhancement to get this and get my old piece of gear and, and, and basically recoup the XP that I've invested. Grant's about 80%, 80-85% of all the XP invested unless you use cron stones. Then you get 100% uh, depending on how many cron stones you use. Uh, but then you can basically recoup that XP and get that there. So I was avoiding plusing my lower grade gear because I thought a lot of the stuff would go wasted. Um, and I would get to points in the game where I was literally getting slapped out. And, and it wasn't until I was like, oh, well, maybe I should plus my gear um, that I started to make progress. And then I realized that I could then use my gear, my old gear, to just put the XP in my new gear. And it makes life a hell of a lot easier. Now, while we're here at the screen, something I also want you to pay attention to since we're talking about gearing up your hero is I want you guys to pay attention to this light stone. So these light stones, once you guys get these here, are very important. And in the beginning, they're not going to seem very important because the stats that you're going to get, you're going to be like, what the hell are these? I don't even understand what these are. Now, with these stats, though, and they'll start to unlock as the light stones get better, you want to use this get light stone button. Because what's going to happen is as you go through the game, you're going to get fragments. And you're going to want to make sure that you fuse these fragments into this. So if you have fragments, the button here will say something different, like use or fuse fragments or something like that. And every 100 fragments you put into this wheel, you have a chance to get a light stone of any grade. Now, granted, the higher the grade, the better stats you'll get. And it's still a little bit RNG. But what I'm saying is there's a lot of stats you could be potentially missing out on as you go through the game if you're ignoring this process. Another... Honorable mention here uh, due to the recent patch are relics and relics is right under light stones You guys can find this under the add-ons tab in the actual cash shop And so when you guys get these relic fragments, which you guys will get after this recent patch You're going to do the same thing here now with relics um, You know 100 pieces 100 fragments turns into a relic and these relics can be used in this weird slot that I didn't find out about until I was about level 40 but this relic slot gives you a big big chunk of of stats um, it's really really good and it's something that especially for my early game peeps out there if you guys ain't level 55 plus yet if you guys aren't in the heart of dungeons yet you guys definitely want to make sure uh, that you pay attention to this um, if you're not getting any rallying fragments or you don't want to wait you can use your contribution points which you'll receive from quests um, and rent one from uh, NPC but now that the relic stuff is out I don't recommend renting it to save your contribution points you will need them um, for to hire workers and stuff in your village and camp anyway Anyway, so this relic portion is going to be really, really important there for your gear. Now, this next part, guys, that I wanted to talk to you guys about is just going to be short and sweet because I want to get on this cash shop and I want to talk about Shaka, Shakatu's, Shakatu's, Shakazulu. Listen, man, whatever this dude's name is, but we're going to get on this quick. I'm going to talk to you guys really quick about what I think you should do with your pearls. Um, it's really, really easy to waste your pearls in this game on stuff that you don't need. And there are two areas that I would use your black pearls in. Period. That's it. Trust me, I wasted a ton. And like I said, I'll, I'll talk more about this in the cash shop and the in the pay to win buying guide, I guess. Um, but there's there's 
a couple of things we're gonna get into. Before we get into that though, I'll talk about Shikatu's here. And the big thing here is guys, you wanna use this shop as much as you can. I'm talking about, I was not using this shop for the longest time because I thought that, you know, I was like, oh, well, I can't pull, you know, a specific grade of gear unless um, I'm a specific level is what I thought. So I wasn't really even drawn here, but you can pull any grade of in, in the game. You can pull the best gear in the game at any time in the game at any, you know, from the shop. So you want to be drawing here as much as you can. Um, this does not work like a traditional pay to win game where you could just buy a crap ton of coins in the shop and then just draw and then just be further than everybody else. That's not how this works. Uh, you get these coins mostly by doing in game stuff, dungeons, you know, raids, you know, stuff like that. You can get them from mob drops and you'll use these coins to draw for gear. And uh, all of these prices vary, but this is a great way to gear your character up very quickly. Now, keep in mind early game, just be careful because, you know, purple gear and above, you have to be, you, ha you have to have a certain spirit level awakening to use this. So that little black spirit that's following you around. Um, as you go through the story, he'll level up. You get Black Spirit Awakening 5 around level 43 um, uh, with a certain quest combination. So this is why you guys want to make sure you go through the story, at which point you'll be able to use all the gear in the game. But you want to make sure that you use these coins to, to draw for this gear as much as you can because this literally can be the difference between success and failure uh, with your gear, especially if you're having trouble finding that. So using that in conjunction with crafting your gear and all that jazz can make your life a hell of a lot easier. So now in terms of the cash shop, guys, and this is a big thing too because I wasted a ton of pearls. If you guys do not know what to do with your pearls, um, again, if you guys have not seen my pay to win buying guide, definitely go check that out because I break the shop down in terms of telling you guys what, what what's worth, what's not worth um and when you should and should not buy stuff because believe me I, I wasted a lot trying to do dumb stuff but when you guys are here with the exchange rate so you can exchange your white pearls to black pearls black pearls are going to be your best friend and with these black pearls what you guys are going to do is you guys are going to find yourself in the market period and the tab that you guys are going to be most concerned about is none of these other ones unless you happen to farm the gold and stuff but the tab you're going to be most concerned about is your accessories I need you guys to understand that at the current point in the game as of 1225 Christmas 2019, if you guys are watching this at any time, it'll probably get a little crazier as time goes by. But the most important thing for you to have in this game starting out is yellow gear. Like the faster you can level up your account. So the, again, go through the quest system level. The faster you can get the level gear, the easier your life is going to be. Okay. So once you're able to use unique equipment, which I think is black spirit level four, um, then you're going to want to really start looking at, you know, getting some jewels. So in the beginning, you have the option, you can start buying like some blue jewels and stuff. It's pretty cheap. The, the issue is that when you buy this stuff, you can only use the, uh, the black pearls to get them. I don't recommend buying any of this gear out of uh, the marketplace at all early on. And I'll show you guys why here in a second. But what I mean is you guys wanna kinda stack your black pearls so you guys can get your yellow gear ready because people are selling this yellow gear and you guys can get some of these necklaces and stuff like 1300 black pearls. Um, and if you guys happen to get these as drops, this is a good way for you guys to generate your economy and get a ton of black pearls if you wanna sell them because this these pieces of gear go like hotcakes. So you can see like a level one here goes from 709 to 865. So you so if you got the black pearls, cause you'll get a ton for doing quests and stuff in the beginning, you wanna stockpile these and you wanna get these, uh, these yellow pieces as soon as you possibly can. So like this one here goes for 825, this is a yellow piece of gear that you can use for a very long period of time um, and then if you want uh, then if you want to keep buying these let's say you're stocking your black pearls you can get these you know pieces of jewelry to plus five but these yellow pieces of gear will hold you over for a very long time now your next question might be well you know that's great uh, D but if we can't use the yellow jewelry until the year 2057 what the hell are we going to do now in 2019 and my answer to that question is you guys are going to go to the cash up you guys are going to go to your add-ons and what's going to happen is you guys are going to see a tab up here. Um, now this we, normally you can uh, buy like open up these slots for like two black pearls, one black pearl, you know, a low amount of black pearls. So what I do, and this is just something that I do personally, I'm not saying this is the best or the worst, uh, but what I do personally is every day I buy these out and because I got my first yellow piece of equipment, I got a yellow bracelet and this tab up here that I had. So if it pops up here, it gives you an opportunity every single time this rolls every day um, to basically buy these out for maybe like a total of 20 black pearls, which uh, your quest black pearls and all that stuff should cover that. And 
and you get an opportunity. Now, keep in mind, like if a, a yellow or a purple, whatever spawns down here, it's going to cost you uh, paid currency. So white pearls on this one, but it's only black pearls up here. So every day I just kind of go through these and do this. Like I said, not saying it's the best way you can completely skip this process. What this allows me to do is get green jewels, uh, which is what you're going to use in the beginning. Unless blue jewels pop up here, I recommend green jewels in the beginning for early progression because they're easy to get duplicate copies of. So you can get, you know, green bracelet, green belt, green earrings, green rings, and you can get these to plus five just with the duplicates. I'm not saying do, to refresh the shop, please don't refresh the shop. <laughs> but from the stuff that you get, this will hold you over at least through the initial part of the game until you start moving into yellow jewelry. I didn't start switching to yellow jewelry until way after 40. Um, so again, green jewels can hold you over for a very, very long time. And then the rest of it is going to boil down to how you manage your equipment. Now, to bring this video to a close, guys, uh, all of those mistakes that I made were some of the biggest mistakes that I made throughout this game, and it cost me a lot of time in progression, so I kind of wanted to sum that up in a way that will allow you guys to get everything in order and start crushing this game as soon as possible. And with my closing thought, especially starting off in this game, is if you can farm it, don't buy it. And I'll go into this more specifically when we go into the pay to win guide. Um, but if you can farm it, you don't need to buy it. And what I mean by that is don't be drawn into the fact that like with these appearances and stuff like, oh, you're like, oh, that looks so cool. Blah, 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 blah. It's 960 pearls. All I got to do is spend some cash and get it. But the reality is, is if you can farm the gold because the market price goes for 6.4 million and the stat bonus isn't that significant. So if you don't need five attack power, five defense power, which is not a lot, by the way, unless you guys are going to get into fusing pet, uh, fusing costumes, which I also don't recommend early game. But if you can farm the gold or figure out how to wait to do get the gold, there's no point for you to buy. It. And that's really going to apply to most of this content in the game specifically early on now later on once you have your economy established and once you have everything rolling for you then it's up to your discretion whatever it is you want to do but um this does not operate like your traditional gasha style game or mobile rpg where if you pop into the game you just start buying a ton of stuff early on uh, i mean outside of pets of course uh you know leveling up your pets and if you get super lucky on the seasonal outfit um then of course, yeah, you'll get an early stat bonus, but it's easier to get into this and focus on the processes that I mentioned before, and it'll help you just blow through the game and get to a position that will allow you to be successful and then decide what you want to do from that junction point. But until then, guys, um, just make sure, like if you guys got to watch this video over again, watch it again, pay attention to the mistakes that I made because the mistakes that I made for myself were very, very costly in terms of time and progression. So if you guys can avoid those mistakes, you guys can blow through this early and then at that point, you can kind of play it how you want to play it or do whatever it is that you want to do. So with that being said, guys, that's all I wanted to cover today. Those are my eight mistakes um, that I want you guys to avoid. <laughs> and if you avoid those mistakes, it'll make your progression a lot smoother in Black Desert Mobile. If you guys got any questions, comments, concerns about any of these steps or any of these features in the game specifically, definitely let me know in the comment box below and I'd be happy to assist. And with that being said, guys, we will see you guys in the next video. Peace.